renal film theory is one of the first attempts to uh, understand these uh, phenomena on the absorber and actually it focuses primarily on the film so you can also hear it or find it as film theory and it is a model that tries to solve turbulent mass transfer to or from a fluid phase boundary very simple actually i like it because it's very straightforward it's very similar to momentum transport and it was suggested by Nernst in 1904 he postulated that the resistance to mass transfer is given in a turbulent fluid by its thin stagnant region which from now on we're going to call film and i love the concept of film i'm pretty sure you already know it film is a very uh thin layer so let me before before we continue let me explain you so let's say that this is the wall we have the bulk part of the liquid therefore the concentration right here will be the bulk concentration and as you can see the concentration is kind of similar you're not changing the concentration profile on the bulk phase but then you get to a point in which you actually have a concentration profile and the length of this part or the L value is actually the length of the film per se. So this is the film and this will be the total liquid phase. So this is liquid, this is liquid. The only difference is that this liquid is at bulk conditions and this is our film liquid. And of course you will have the point or the line in which we have the gas interaction. And this line is the interface between gas and liquid. This is kind of similar to the laminar sublayer that forms when a fluid flows in the turbulent regime parallel to a flat plate. So you can imagine, of course, well, it's kind of uh, difficult for me to just uh, have a perfect analogy. But what I want to show you is that the profile are kind of similar. So near the interface, you're going to have the most interaction near the bulk phase you're going to have the least uh, interaction and as you can imagine guys the main problem right here is that we are just assuming one thin layer or film we're ignoring all the gas part that changes as well a process of absorption of a let it be ammonia into liquid b let it be water is going to take place note that there is no vaporization of b there is no resistance to mass transfer of a in the gas phase because it is pure A. At the interface, remember the interface is where you have the interaction between the gas and the liquid. So this is another diagram, but pretty similar. This is the wall. This is the liquid. This is the film, which technically speaking is still liquid. So this is liquid. And this is the film. And this is the gas phase, which unfortunately to this model has not changes at all. So actually, as you can see here, the partial pressure of A remains constant, whereas later on we're going to see that actually we should or we can model a change of profile as well. There is no resistance to mass transfer of A in the gas phase because it's pure A. Let me just uh, explain that part. The mass transfer of A, ammonium, has no resistance at all to go from the gas phase to the liquid phase. The resistance is actually from the liquid film. At the interface, phase equilibrium is going to assume. So this is kind of interesting and counterintuitive. Typically, we should assume that actually there is no phase equilibrium because that's also a driving force between the two interfaces. Interface one, which is uh, from gas to liquid and interface two, which is from the interface to the liquid. So this is gas to the interface. And this is interface to the liquid. The concentration of A, which in this case is ammonia, at the interface is going to be assumed as concentration of A, I. I stands for interface. And it's going to be related to the partial pressure of A at the interface. So pretty similar, either uh, we can use a fancy model, but definitely Henry's law is going to help us model this. Remember that we can calculate the concentration of the component if we have the Henry's law constant, which will be a slope. You know that typically we have a curve, but in this case, because the film is so thin, we can assume that this is actually a straight line with a slope and the partial pressure. Remember that partial pressure is not going to be modeled, so this is a fixed value in this model. 
in the liquid film of thickness delta so we got this the film which technically if you wanted to account for the whole liquid uh, length let it be l but in reality we have delta so by definition the bulk phase will be l minus delta and it is very important to and uh, to see that the origin starts in the interface and rather than the reverse many times i see students working from the wall then they get to the film and then calculate the film but the difficult part is of course to know what is the actual length here if you don't know the delta value okay Molecular diffusion occurs with a driving force of the change of concentration. That's obvious for me. And where the CA bulk is the concentration of the bulk point. So if you were to calculate concentration here or here, or here, or here, you should have the same concentration or average concentration because this is the bulk concentration of the liquid. Since the film is assumed to be very thin, all of the diffusing A is assumed to pass through the film and into the bulk liquid meaning that you have no accumulation in the film they just pass through accordingly to fixed law we already know this from our section 3 in which we treated uh, molecular diffusion we can model these as follows the diffusivity of a and b divided by the length times the driving force if the liquid phase is dilute in A, which we are proposing, then we can ignore the bulk flow, which in my opinion is one of the uh, flaws from this theory because we should not avoid bulk flow. And this effect will make a simpler mathematical approach. So the total flux of A or ammonia will be given by diffusivity divided by the length of the film times the driving force, which is the change in concentrations in their phase and bulk phase. And, well, if you wanted to account for the bulk flow, which is kind of similar as this, remember the natural logarithm, uh, if we have very dilute cases, this is almost equal to 1, so you have both cases right here. In practice, the ratios of the diffusivity of A and B divided by length, or concentration times diffusivity of A and B divided by length of film and the natural logarithm, remember that this if we are working with dilute cases, this is similar to one, are typically replaced by empirical mass transfer coefficients, Kc and K apostrophe C respectively. So we already saw these guys. What we are doing is just remembering uh, how we used to model these type of films and why is it useful for our application. And C stands for mass transfer with concentrations and this apostrophe stands for the case in which we account for bulk flow effect even though we know that in dilute cases this is equal to 1. The film theory is typically criticized because it predicts that the rate of mass transfer is proportional to the molecular diffusion, sorry, molecular diffusivity, and typically you will see that this is not the case, guys, actually, because we are ignoring the gas part, as stated here, this is not entirely the case. This is a very theoretical ideal case, Let's say that this might be true, only we operate at very low uh, flow rates of the liquid or water, and if there is no turbulence. But regardless of this type of disadvantages, the film theory continues to be widely used in the design of mass transfer separation equipment, which in my opinion is kind of uh, interesting because the original film was one of the very first models, and we are still using this model even though we have other theories which we're going to see next.